Let's organize this information into an ANOVA table. ANOVA. The first column in our ANOVA table is going to be labeled source. What are the sources of variation in our data? Well, the sources of variation that we've been discussing are between and within. Units differ from each other either because they're in different groups or because within each group there's some error. Between, within. In addition to between and within, I'm going to make a row called total because there's also a total amount of variation, not only variation decomposed into between and within. The next column I'm going to label sum of squares. And this is where we record the quantities that we've been discussing. Whatever the sum of squares between is, that's where we're going to put it. Whatever the sum of squares within is, that's where we're going to put it. And the sum of those two, the sum of squares total, that's where we're going to put it. So we've already filled in two columns of our ANOVA table just based on the discussion we've already been having. The next column is going to be labeled degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is a number that reflects how much information we have about each of these quantities. Another way to think about the degrees of freedom is just what's the thing that we would divide these quantities or related quantities by in order to get a variance that we're used to. So we've discussed this a little bit, but let's be more specific. Degrees of freedom. And often, especially in computer output, these are abbreviated SS for sum of squares or DF for degrees of freedom. So we know that if we take this sum of squares total and divide by n minus 1, we've got the sample variance for the entire data set. So it turns out that n minus 1 is the degrees of freedom corresponding to the total. We also know that if we take the sum of squares within and divide by n minus i, where i is the number of groups, SSW divided by m minus i is our estimate of the variance within each group, assuming that the true variance within each population is the same. It's the pooled sample variance. It's just the pooled sample variance. It's the sum of the squared residuals divided by n minus i. So n minus i is the degrees of freedom, the amount of information we have associated with SSW. We know that SSB is a quantity that's related to the variability between the different group means. But we also know that SSB divided by some certain number is only going to be exactly that variance between groups if the sample size is the same in each group. So it's not, in this case, quite as simple as dividing this thing by something else to get a variance that we've already discussed. However, it is true that the number of groups minus 1 is a quantity that helps us relate SSB to the variability between group means. Note that this sum of squares decomposition that we showed told us that SSB plus SSW is SST. But note it works in this column as well. I minus 1 plus n minus i, well the i's cancel, we end up with n minus 1. These quantities sum as well. And they have to. And one trick I'll, I'll tell you about for looking at your, your um, computer output and trying to figure out whether you specified your ANOVA correctly, you should check these numbers and see whether they look like what you think they should be. The most easy sign, the easiest sign to recognize um, of making some kind of error in specifying your ANOVA is that these degrees of freedom are not what you think. This is not number of groups minus one. This is not um, total number of observations minus one. So check those numbers as soon as you see your ANOVA output. What are we going to do next? The next column I'm going to label mean square. Often abbreviated MS. How are we going to get that? Well, now we're going to literally take each of these quantities um, in the sum of squares column and divide by the degrees of freedom. If we do it here, if we take SSW divided by M minus I, note that what we have is the pooled sample variance. We've already given this a name in other contexts. Another name that we've given to this is sigma hat. 
squared. So that's what that quantity is. If we did it here, if we took SST divided by n minus 1, this is regular old S squared, ignoring the fact that we have any groups. And now what we're going to do to get the quantity that we call the mean square between, we're going to take the sum of square between and we're going to go ahead and divide it by i minus 1. Now again, this is not always exactly related to the variance between groups. It's always related. It's not always exactly equal to that particular variance. And we've shown how to relate SSB to the variance between the group means. But this is certainly a related quantity. SSB divided by i minus 1. I'm going to give some names to these only because that's the convention. This is MSB. This is MSW. And I've never seen anyone call this MST, so I'm not going to. All right? But you see the pattern here. Importantly, since it's, it's worth conquering all the different names that people have given to these quantities, this same thing here is often called MSE for mean square error, and that may be a term that you've heard before. This idea of the sum of squares within is also the same idea as it being the sum of squared residual, the sum of squared errors. So sometimes when we get all the way over here, people start calling that quantity mean square error. But all we've really said so far is that we're going to take the quantities we already have, sum of squared between, sum of squared within, sum of squared, beto sum of squared total, write down the corresponding degrees of freedom, and divide each of these quantities to get the mean square between, the mean square within, also known as the mean square error, and we could divide um, these quantities as well to get the overall sample variance. What's next?